so the video transmission is going pretty well hello guys today i will show you how to make video transmission system and receiver for your drone or your rc to make the vtx you will be needing an esp32 an esp32 cam module and two 2.4 gigahertz antenna the esp32 cam needs to be ai tinker version if you are going to buy an esp32 i recommend you to buy an esp32 ue version on that esp you will not see a pcb antenna those who have bought the regular esp32 with the pcb antenna will also work but you have to solder the antenna first you have to connect the antenna to both esp now for the esp32 cam for connecting the antenna you see there is three pins over there the middle one is already connected to the top pin which is for the pcb antenna but we are going to use the uh, external antenna for that you have to make sure you connect the middle wire to the bottom one you should not connect to the top to do that you can use a um, soldering iron without any lead you can just uh, heat the resistor and the, remove the part now you see if you remove the antenna like this and connected it and turn the Wi-Fi on it will damage your uh, RF transmitter and here it's a transceiver so be careful of that connect the middle pin to the bottom you see I've uh, connected you can connect the now for the next step you have to connect the ESP32 with the antenna if you are having ESP32U or ESP32UE version you can simply connect the antenna you don't need to do the next step if you are having regular ESP you have to do the next step for ESP32 with PCB antenna you see there is two traces on PCB you have to expose the positive which is the left and the ground plate which is on the right by shaving off the black protective coating then cutting the specific section of the ESP32 antenna next you have to take your antenna and cut the UFL connector after you cut it you will see this cable the outer wire is the ground plate and the inner wire is the positive plate you have to connect the positive wire to the positive plate and the ground wire to the ground plate you can use soldering iron for that after you connected the antenna for the esp32 cam and esp32 you have to go to the github which i have provided in the description so there will be two codes one of the code is for esp32 cam which is the transmitter and the ESP32 which is the receiver this is how it's going to work the ESP32 cam will take the image and send it to the ESP32 and after that you can view on your phone the benefits of using this method rather than sending the images directly to phone is the range as we discussed on another video about the transmission of ESP32 cam to phone we seen the range was pretty low and the images were very unstable by using this method you will get longer range and more stable frame rate the main idea was to use the NRF module to transmit the video as it have longer range and have ability to transfer 2 megabytes per second unfortunately the NRF modules have huge drawback on the package size as you can only send 32 bytes data if nrf is used the esp32 cam has to cut the images into small packages for the nrf modules this will increase delay and more processing power that's why i use the esp now protocol esp now protocol also have the same issue even though it is able to send 2 megabyte per second transfer rate 
the ESP now protocol is also limited by the package size the ESP now has two version the ESP now 1 and ESP now 2 the ESP now 1 is only limited to 240 bytes ESP now version 2 is limited by 1480 bytes if you want to use the ESP now video transmission you have to go to the github releases download the latest and after unzipping you will get these two files this is for the ESP32 cam and this is for the ESP32 now open it open both code and you will see the codes now for ESP we are using the ESP now protocol so we have to use the uh, we have to find out your own ESP's MAC address to do that you have to go to board manager and type ESP32 install this now to click file example ESP32 go down and you will see the MAC address click MAC address click get MAC address you will uh, get this code now what you need to do is just upload the code to your ESP32 AI Thinker version and you also have to upload the code to ESP32 dev module. Now after you uploaded the code to ESP32 cam and ESP32 dev module, you have to click the serial monitor. After you uploaded the code to ESP32 cam and ESP32 dev module, you need to click the restart button on the ESP32. So you see that I got this. Now you have to go and see the Wi-Fi station and soft AP that is your MAC address. So you see, uh, you got two. For the VTX, this is the VTX code. You have to change this with this. So you see, this is the soft AB, Wi Fi soft AB. You have to type this on here 0x00. And you see the last one, you see the X0XF9. So you have to type this like this in here okay now you also have to type the same thing on the uh this is the uh cam so you have to type on the esp receiver you have to type the wi-fi station so wi-fi station mac a8c so you see zero x8c you have to type that to decrease or increase the resolution what you need to do is change this to uh, any of these now you can upload the code on this side now in here you also have to see this is the um, hotspot name of the hotspot and this is the password of this you can change the password or the name now you can upload the code to ESP now if you want Wi-Fi version instead of ESP now go to the link and uh, click releases download the latest zip after unzipping you will see two files this is for the esp32 cam and this is for the esp32 now opening it you will see this now this is the same the resolution so the same way we did on the previous esp now protocol based on and this is the quality and you see uh, zero, uh, 0 gives the highest quality and 64 gives the worst quality now you don't need to do anything in the transmitter side this is the transmitter side and this is the receiver side this is the name and that will be the password don't change this if you're going to change this you have you also have to change this so take care in mind that and upload the code you don't need to do any procedures like the mac address that we done on esp now protocol so you can just upload the code to connect to the video you have to connect the wi-fi then open your browser and type so 192.16341 this is the esp now for esp now based the ip address always going to be same but for the wi-fi version the ip address will always change to uh, the last value will go to 0 0.2 or 0 0.3 or 0 0.4 for for me i got 0 0.2 right now so for you guys it may change so first of all you have to connect to the wi-fi then go to browser you can see the resolution which is vga and the uh, frame rate is approximately 60 
Are we gonna check the VTX? So consider subscribing. So there is the bike there with this uh, receiver and uh, we have the transmitter with us. Now we have it. <sighs> now I kept it on 60 FPS limit so the ESP don't get heated up pretty fast and you can change it by changing here. Uh, the value is uh, made by 1000 divided by the frame rate you want. So if you want 60 FPS, you have to type 16.6. .6. I have kept it at 17. Uh, if you want to get 16.6, .6, you have to type 17 or 16. You cannot type the decimal values. So, the video transmission is going pretty well, I would say. Yeah, I think it's still going. And the delay is uh, not that bad. Now, this comes at around, uh, I think, 40 millisecond delay if you want to go lower you have to decrease the quality now this is the QVGA so this will get 60 FPS you can go 90 FPS if you remove the limit and uh, this will be the lowest delay if you're considering for uh, freestyle you can try it with this but it's not that good compared to analog or the commercial VTX it will have some delay of some 50 to 60 millisecond it's still too long you know analog has almost no delay Video is going pretty well, I think. Now, on, uh, on the phone, we have stabilization, and the uh, ESP cam don't have stabilization, so the image will be pretty bad. You can see the video going pretty well. Now, compared to the Wi Fi. The ESP now will have a longer range, but the Wi-Fi will uh, have a better frame rate and uh, less hassle if you are considering for the... Um, if you want to fly drone, I recommend you guys to use the Wi-Fi. So this is the low uh, low quality high frame rate version. Now this is the highest quality. So you can see the FPS is uh, 20, I think 20, 40, not 40, 20, 15 somewhere. And the delay is also going to be high. This is a uh, SV SVGA, and SVGA is uh, equivalent to the uh, I think the analog.
I get 50 FPS, it's not that good for a drone, but you know, you can't try it with it. You can fly with it. It's no, it's, it's better than nothing, so. Now the range is around 200 meters, so it's ground to ground, you will get 200, 300 maybe, but not that long, but if you are going with the air, you may get 500 to 700 somewhere, if you're lucky. Uh, and I'm using cheap dipole antenna, so I recommend you guys to go with the directional antenna. See the... There was some issue with the ESP now based. You can see the frame rate is low, which is uh, the that's how much you can get on ESP now based. You guys try the ESP now and uh, tell me the result. And thank you for watching. Consider subscribing.